What up? You're listening to the True Conversation Podcast, presented by Volcom. I'm your host, Fat Tony. For this episode of True Conversation, I got to speak with some true originals of snowboarding. Listen as Russell Winfield, Gabrielle Maiden, and Salima Masakela talk about their experiences in the industry and the influence of Black American culture on the sport. Uh, what's up, guys? How are you? Good. Nice to meet all y'all virtually. Yeah, man. Yes. Likewise. Just to intro myself, my name is Fat Tony. I'm a rapper from Houston, Texas, originally. And my involvement with Volcom is, at a, is as a brand ambassador, right? And I first heard of Volcom because I grew up with an interest in skateboarding. But what we're talking about today is snowboarding, something I know absolutely nothing <laughs> about. But I do know a lot about being black, and I know a lot about racism. So anything you guys want to say to me about snowboarding, it's okay if it goes over my head, talk to me like I'm a total dummy, all right? Ah, uh, that's the greatest, that's the greatest fucking intro here. <laughs> Just keeping it honest, you know? I love so it. on today's show, we have Russell Winfield, Gabrielle Maiden, and Salima Masakela, all three people who love snowboarding, and I want to start there. How did each of y'all get into snowboarding? For me, I went to the skateboarding shop in Connecticut to get a new skateboard. And the year was 1982. <laughs> and they had the Burton Performer Elite. I seen that thing. And I, I, yeah, that was it for me. I knew right then. That was it. And then it was golf courses for a few years. Golf courses? What do you mean? Well, uh, I think for me, why snowboarding was comfortable was I could be around a bunch of white people that were also outcasts in the spot because skiing was prevalent and they hated snowboarding. You know what I'm saying? So for me, it was like, yeah, they hate me, but they also hate him and they hate him. <laughs> and me together because we're snowboarders and me their their hatred of me because I was a black man was secondary. Mm. And so it, it felt less. And that's going to sound crazy, but tell a 14 year old kid that that's crazy. You know no, what I'm man, I think a lot of stuff that, that we're into, we're, we're drawn to it because it's for outcasts, for out, outsiders, and we can inherently relate to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a really great point. It's like some real enemy my enemy like young young kid shit for me the year was i saw it for the first time in 1986 my family had moved from new york to new england and i i was just like i would walk by a ski shop and i saw a snowboard i think it was a a, a cruiser burton cruiser mm -hmm. and it just looked dope like there was something about the um the, the, the swallowtail, et cetera. And living in New England, the only kids who really took an interest in me were the punk rock kids, like the dirty, grimy punk rock kids. Like I went to an all white high school in, in, in New England and there were these four kids who were just like punk rock as could be. They gave me a skateboard and I had just started to learn skateboard. So when I saw the snowboard, I just was like, I, I, someday I need to do that. And to Russell's point, I loved how it was, you know, rebellious and that, you know, these dudes were getting har arrested uh, for going up and hiking the mountains and getting caught by ski patrol. And two years later, I got out of nowhere. My, my mother and stepfather moved to Southern California to a surf town, but only two hours away was snowboarding. And everybody in that, in that town skated and surfed. And naturally, six months later, after I started surfing, um, I started snowboarding and that was it, it was a wrap. So and that year was 88. So there's a divide between skiers and snowboarders, but for you as a skateboarder getting into snow and, and you being someone who was into surf too, there, there wasn't that beef, right? It was all good. If you were into skating, you could fuck with snowboarding and vice versa. Yeah, it was all about standing side, sideways stance, basically. Mm-hmm. I'll go, Gabriel, I'll go along with you. that. Well, that's, it's interesting because <laughs> I actually started skiing <laughs> when I was 12. But the thing was, is that I was super, I didn't, it didn't fit for me. So it's like when I would go and I would ski, I had the poles, 
And then I felt very discombobulated. And then also I just got rid of the poles and I was just like, oh, I'll just cruise. And I remember, cause Big Bear Mountain is where I ride, where I grew up riding. And then we would go up for like the winter and it would be like with friends and we would have a cabin, my parents would have it. And then I remember we were going to go ride and then all the, the, the people that I had come from my school, they were all snowboarding. Mm. And then I was the only one skiing. And so then I go and I'm skiing down the hill. They're falling. They're like, oh, man, this is so great. And I'm just like going down the mountain. I'm just like, <laughs> oh, cool. And then I just was like, I felt not that I felt like I was left out. I just felt like I, I wasn't being part of the fun like I, I wanted to to be challenged as well like I didn't feel like I was being challenged at that moment and so then I asked my friend who was with me he's still one of my really good friends to this day and I was like yo can you just like can you like can I like put my feet in your boots and can I like so we went in the backyard and then like we made like a little mound and then she strapped me in and then I dropped in from this like not that big of a mound, but it was like, you know, it was decent for me. It felt ginormous. And then I went and I slid down. I fell very hard. And then that was it. I was like, I want to get better at this. So, yeah. And I, it was no judgment for you coming out of like skiing into snowboarding? No, like literally the only thing I remember is just myself being like, I got to stop that and move to that. Like, I just was like, I made the choice. I was like, this isn't fitting for me. Like I, I wasn't as excited. It was something that my parents did, right? They wanted me to ski just like, Hey, this is probably going to be, you know, better just in the sense of like being easier to learn and to go down. Cause most of the time the kids learn on skis, you know? Uh, and, uh, but yeah, I, I made the choice and it was a nice move. And then ever since it was a great obsession and led to great things. So it seems like all three of y'all were pretty much welcomed into this the first time, right? You, you had friends into it too. There was a support system around there. When did yeah. things go from it being a great <laughs> hobby that you're getting into to y'all getting into the industry in any capacity? For me, I am a super competitive person. Like I grew up, my hometown is the Bush's true hometown in New York. You know, my mama was from Durham, North Carolina. She was like, no, you're not. Uh, uh." So she moved up to New York and planted me in the middle of this, you know, like as lily white as you can be. Mm. So I played ice hockey and I was good at that, but I hated, I hated the whole political thing. So when I started snowboarding, like I started just getting better and that's all I wanted to do. I left high school for a year and moved up to Vermont and and taught skiing so that i could get a free pass so i could snowboard hustler um, just gotta do what you gotta do you know what I'm yes. um so i quickly i sent a uh, i was telling somebody earlier this story i i sent a letter and some still pictures to a to a snowboard company to sponsor that was my sponsor me take I was like, hey, my name is Russell Winfield, and I really love snowboarding. I compete in all of the the different disciplines, and I do good. Here's some pictures. Please send me some stuff. And I the and it was Mistral, and the dude, like some dude from like Baltimore or something, you know, some like windsurfing because Mistral was a windsurfer company, hit me up and was like, I got to tell you, like if you didn't send those pictures. You probably weren't on, but I'm, you're on, you know? Wait, so like he's, Tell me about that. Because I, I was the only one, bro. Like, <laughs> he was, uh, you know, he was smart yeah. enough to see the marketing opportunity in front of him, you know? Uh, because I'm sure what I wrote him just was horrible, you know? Um, and I'm sure how, he was how getting... How old were you when this happened? 16, maybe? Mm. You know, nowadays it's easy. You just start an Instagram account and start stacking <laughs> clips. Back then you had to like, you know, talk to the local mountain photographer, the dude that was doing like the family <laughs> pics. Be like, hey man, why don't you come down over here to the half pipe and I'm going to jump right here and you could get a shot. 
Yeah, for sure. You got to make it happen. Salema, mm-hmm. how about you? I I went skiing the, the first time I went to the mountain because I'd never been to the mountains before. And I hated skiing. It was like, <laughs> I, like I was like a Gabby. I was like, I was like, this shit is crazy. Like, <laughs> I'm going to like rip my groin or a leg off or something. Yeah. So you got yeah. one ski going one way and no one's taught you anything about your uphill or downhill ski. And yeah. if you don't learn edu- like the basic fundamentals, skiing is fucking hard. And mm-hmm. I hated it. And my, my so I my, my friends all were snowboarding. I was like, I had I was I already had seen it, and, and the first time I went snowboarding, I was falling ten times more than when I was skiing. Mm-hmm. But there was something about knowing, like, if I could just get to this thing, I'll be able to do this, and the mm-hmm. familiarity of that of just standing sideways, which I had been doing on my sk- skateboard and snowboard. And it was so much different than those. There was like, I have to learn how to crack this code so that I could, I could be rad basically. You know what I mean? So that I could like, I could do the shit that I saw in the magazines and like just jump and not land on my head. And that the first time I went was at night. It was a night session uh, up at, at, at Big Bear at Snow Summit. Oh and yeah. I <laughs> couldn't walk the next day. But it was a wrap for me. I was just like, I'm a fuck, I'm a snowboarder, and I and I was I was snowboarding with my same friends that I surfed and and skated with, and that was mm. my crew, and we all did all three. Which wasn't there wasn't a lot of places where you could live and do three. We we were re- I was really lucky to land in Southern California, and I didn't know it at the time, but I also landed in like one of the hubs of where the industry was. Mm. So is so is your so being close to where the businesses were is that how you got into the snowboarding industry? Yeah, for sure. Like everybody here, it just became a passion and it became a hustle. And I didn't have money, so it was like, you know, for all of us, is I, I don't know if Gabby did it, but you know, we would drive up to the mountains and like look for people who had ridden only half the day and were leaving. Oh my god, you approached the ticket! <laughs> oh yeah, that's called clipping the ticket. What yeah, so we so we would we have wire wire cutters, right? And you just walk up to somebody like, "Oh, you guys are leaving, right?" I'm like, yeah, like, can we clip your ticket? And you know, or being approached by like black <laughs> wire cutters in the mouth. like give it up. Oh, shit. <laughs> like I don't want I don't want your money. I just want your lift ticket that I can't afford. And you know, then you you know you had your little tape deal, and make sure you tape it up right so that when the when the ski patrol would pull yep. it, um. You know, it would look like it was legit, and that's what we would do. We would just go take chances and walk around the parking lot for a few hours and find some rich people who got done early and, like, get up on the hill. And totally. I just fell in love with it. And I ended up having a neighbor who worked for us, this goggle company called Bollet. Mm. He, was a, he, was a, he was a rep. <laughs> and he had the he had this, remember the sick-ass, like, Dude, the Bollet? Bollets were amazing, that was, the French the ones. Shit, the French yeah. ones. Yeah. And so he was a Bollet rep. What, what era up, are, this is, are we talking here? This, this is like 90, late 80s, 80s, early 90s? This is, yeah. yeah, this is 89, 90. Okay. Yeah. And so he, he took an interest in me. I told him how much I love snowboarding. And he had a friend up at Snow Summit who ran the marketing office. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. And he was like, <laughs> go up there, ask for this person, and they'll get you a ticket. And I was like, what are you even saying? <laughs> and sure enough, like, you walk in. And back, like, there were no black people in the mountain. So you walk mm-hmm. in and people just be like, a bunch of, like, <laughs> and mountain bros were different than coastal or skate bros. Tell it's me It's a whole the other difference. conversation. Mm-hmm. And um, they didn't know what you were doing there. But long story short, like, it, it just became about a hustle. And that's how I got better. And Snow- Transworld Snowboarding Magazine actually was in the next town over from me. Like, imagine that. In Oceanside, California, near the beach, was the Bible of the sport. And I got a job there answering the phones. Oh wow! Um, as a receptionist, and that's how I that's how I made my way into the industry because I never had access to like the competition scene or anything like that, and I didn't have friends who were really that good. Um, and I, in fact, I didn't really my learning curve at getting better at snowboarding came later. I just loved to ride, but then getting a job at Transworld, I suddenly was around people who really ripped and started to go on trips and realize that the mountain that I was riding wasn't a mountain; it was a was a yeah. putting green compared. 
Russell, so so was this also the late eighties, early nineties for you too? Yeah, yep. Late eighties, I was uh, still on the East Coast. I moved to where Sal was mm. um, in nineteen ninety. About 20, 20 minutes south, right? Yeah. You, yeah. I was in wow. Pacific Beach. So if you ever get off the I five on Grand Avenue and you go all the way down to the beach, you pass my first apartment. It's right so there next to the Y'all both were in the heartland of the snowboarding industry. Just by chance. Oh, it wasn't by chance for me. Yeah, he came out there to do the damn thing. Mm. Yeah, I was at that chance. point I was in it. Yeah. I was by chance because of my family had moved there and I got this this job and we didn't we did but we didn't meet each other until probably 93 94 the first time mm -hmm. and I was telling Russell this on a on a we did a, on a, a podcast a few weeks ago his podcast yeah. there was a there was a, a Transworld Snowboarding Magazine photo issue and there was a two page spread of this kid doing the, like the most steezed out board slide on this, this, this round rail. <laughs> and I just remember looking really, really close and I was like, oh shit. I screamed <laughs> in my cubicle. <laughs> and people were like, what? I was like, this dude is black. Yeah. This dude is black. Why didn't anybody tell me this dude is black? Just immediately cut the pictures out of the magazine and put that shit up in my cubicle. And I was so like, wow. It, yeah, it was suddenly yeah. like, <laughs> Yes. What? Up. Russell motherfucking Winfield. What? Like <laughs> that was it. Like there might there might have there must have at that moment there, there it was like suddenly there were ten thousand of us and here's this dude, he's at the highest level. And I was just fascinated by his whole shit. And I mean, as you'll find out, the way we would end up intertwining and, and getting to know each other was crazy. But like the first time I met him, I could like I could, I was just like, oh fanning out. This just thing is right here. <laughs> it's crazy. Gabby, how do you get into the industry of snowboarding? Well, um, well, yeah, so Bear is, Bear Mountain is my home mountain. And, and when I graduated high school, I was planning on going to, to uh, the Academy of Dramatic Arts. Mm. And, uh, but then, because being an actor was my, my very first passion of thought. But then snowboarding kind of took me on this detour of awesome. Once I graduated high school, I was just like, dude, how cool would it be to like ride every day and then I wouldn't have to wait to only go for like a week. I could like be there all the time. And so then I was just like, you know what? I really want to have life experiences. I really want to travel. I want to do something different. So I moved up to Big Bear. My parents, of course, were like, you're going to your life away. You're not going to college. And I was like, no, no, guys, no, just trust me. It's going to be great. I'm going to get my own apartment. I wound up working at ski rentals. And I feel like, like all of us had that conversation <laughs> with our parents oh, about yeah. everything we do. You're going to yeah. be a rapper. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Anthony, Anthony, yeah. Anthony, Anthony. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Only my family calls me that because in my household, my dad is Tony. But now uh, I'm, uh, I'm grown up, so I'm Tony. Like, uh. <laughs> That's my dad's name. Tony, that's a good name. Wow. A name. Yeah. But anyways, long story short, I moved up there and then I, I did a couple of contests. And then um, Nikita Clothing, uh, uh, they had this, uh, one of their contests was uh, Nikita Chiquita. And when then, is this, by the way? This is, ooh, I was, I was like 19. And um, I'm sorry, did you hear that? Sorry, I thought I turned off my notification. Hey, um, it's all good. Oh my God. Yeah, so I was around, I was 19. So it was like a year, like it had been like a year or so. But like what like so time period, really... like the 2000s, late 2000s? Yeah, 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 like, yeah definitely. And then I wound up, um, I didn't even win the contest. I just wound up, they actually made an award for me. And Laura Hadar, who's my favorite snowboarder at the time, and she was like, let's just... We got Gabby's with the Steez Award. And I was like, oh man, I got like the Style Award. That's so cool. I have this jumpsuit that doesn't even fit me. I didn't even care. I was just like, this is so awesome. And then the team manager at the time, she came up to me and she was like, yo, we, we love your style. We love what you're all about and your energy. Cause I was like, you know, making my own clothes and painting on them. Like, I don't know, I was having fun. Like I just was just writing and just being myself. And then I wound up getting flow. 
from Nikita. And then that kind of just started and catapulted everything because mm. then Nikita wound up um, within that year, I wound up getting flowed. And then they uh, brought me to San Francisco to do the first photo shoot, which led me to sign contracts. And then it just kind of kept going and kept going. And then they made me one of the main faces of the company. And so it went out not only just in the U S cause they're a European company in Iceland. And then, um, and then, yeah. Scandinavian company, Gabby. Scandinavian. <laughs> yes. The Scandinavian. I love you. <laughs> what? It's an Iceland. Yeah. Sorry. You, yeah. You get, yeah. They so don't now, like being called I mean. Europeans. No. Oh yeah. Sorry. They're Scandinavian. They don't, they don't take very also, well to it. No, but no. you know what I'm saying? But you know what I'm saying? Cause it also, it was all throughout on that, on that, on, on, that side of the pond, as I would maybe say. Okay, sorry. You're right. They're Scandinavian. That company was also very big in Europe. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Too, They're, They're very big. big in Europe. Yeah. Now awesome. that y'all are like in the game, <laughs> Gabby, you're getting flow. Russell, you're in magazines, videos, Did, videos. You start. You're you're starting to see Russell in magazines too. Did y'all feel like? black snowboarders were represented properly or underrepresented far as the industry goes press sponsorships all of that well there was me and there was one dude trevor from tahoe and he was just like the south lake homie um and there's a story about that guy later on in my career that is craziest one of the craziest times of my life uh but i mean i guess i felt i was being represented okay um but here's the thing tony when you're 18 19 years old at least for me i was so wrapped up in other stuff that i didn't even really think about it like that you know what i'm saying like i was just trying to make my way cuz my whole career up until then i was the only one mm. so it's like if there were 13, 14 of us and I was the only one getting shots, then yeah, then I think there'd be a problem. Mm. But there was one of us on the professional level. Um, and I, I, I was doing everything I could. Um, and and I Russell, think, no, go ahead, Russell. Go ahead, Sal. So, so no, I was like, Russell was like Han Solo Negro. <laughs> on the pro at a, at a professional level like at an elite professional level yeah for almost a a decade from for for a decade like it was him mm -hmm. and i think yeah was it under under representation absolutely and I, i'm just going to speak from me from from my perspective on the outside looking in i think relative to what russell's talent level was and his his personality and charisma like he was a superstar like for the people like people yeah. wanted to be him they wanted to buy his boards like he had he was one of the few people who could express himself outside of being on the mountain and i think you know his sponsors missed all of the opportunities i think he he should have been treated better and and had far more and 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 one of the things that, that I think lacked was like there was no there was no mentorship None. Of, of, of of there was no one no representation for someone to be like yo Russ like here's what you have to look out for etc mm. and as as Russell said like being just in general for for even like the white kids in snowboarding they were getting had as some it was. of them some of them some of them had you know the, the, there's a couple of my peers that are still some of my best friends that had that that mentor that was like eh -eh, or yeah. come here or I, I didn't you know but that's that's no I'm not yeah but I'm just I'm just that's why I I, I, I can say it you can uh, so. I, 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 I can say it I I would I would like to say as well it's that because like I looked up to you guys Russell and Salema <clears throat> and I didn't have a female to look mm. up to because there was no one because I'm the only one. And so and that that was hard for me in the sense because 
I would be knowing that you guys exist, but I would ha not be able to talk to you. And I wouldn't know how to talk to you. When the first day, the first time I even talked to you, Salema, I was like, it was like a very nerve wracking moment. I was very like trying hard not to be a fan girl. But it was just, it's just, it's something that was such a, um, I, I didn't think about it at the time either because I, I was just happy to ride. Like I just wanted to ride. I just was excited to get on the mountain. I was excited just to learn the different tricks. And I, when I noticed that I was the only one that was female and that was, that was black, then that kind of, everyone kind of made that a thing about me. Mm. And then I wasn't able to <clears throat> unsee it. And that I kind of wish didn't happen, at least into my mindset, because then that gave me an extra pressure <laughs> that I didn't even initially think about when I first started, if that makes sense. So it it's totally like, makes sense. Yeah, because then it was just like, how does it feel, Gabby, to be the only black woman that's snowboarding, you know, professionally? And was I'd that be like, the same thing for y'all, too? Russell, Salema, did, did y'all also get like pigeonholed as y'all are the black guys in snowboarding as far as interviews and stuff? Uh, for me, I don't, I mean, I was, and everybody knew I was, but I think that if they had told me I was, they would have had to pay me like I was. Mm. Mm. And they missed, that's where they missed the boat. Like, they, that's where they really missed the boat and missed the opportunity. I, I think mm -hmm. for me, I, I, I dealt with all different weird things on the come up for sure that I could always attribute to that was I was never raised to look to look for it but when my spider senses were tingling yeah I knew when it was happening um and you know when you're hanging out with mostly white kids you know and you're in the bar after the mountain you know and they wanted like they're eager to tell you the latest fucking black joke that they just that they heard and they feel like because you do what they do like you're gonna be able to <laughs> Black joke, so like a racist joke. Yeah, but that they didn't think it was racist because they've been laughing at it. There, you know what I mean. Mm. Um, and just all sorts of different types of microaggressions and things that I dealt with um, throughout the deal. But I, I think I was lucky that I that I worked in and around skateboarding. At the same time, like the brands that I worked for had a, a, like a hand in surfing, a hand in skateboarding, a hand in snowboarding. So I was always around. I got to be around a lot of black black people in skateboarding that were doing dope shit. Yeah. And we had these small little mini collectives to the point where in about seven, six years, seven years after I started at Transworld answering the phones, I was a part of founding a, a, a clothing company um, mm. that was like the first clothing company that was ran and owned by a bunch of black oh, and fuck. brown kids um called alpha numeric and one oh, of the yeah first, yeah yeah i did not know that yeah oh yeah we were in there I, I one of the this... first first things i did was was call up russell and be like want to ride for alpha numeric like wow. that was that was one of the first thing that i knew had to be done um, and that answer was hard and fast. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I don't care. I don't what contract. It doesn't matter to me. Let's go. Yeah. With your people. Let's go. When, when uh, I came up and was introduced to all of this, I got into skateboarding and I got into it through my friends and all of my friends who were into skateboarding were all black. We went to a predominantly black school and none of the white kids there had any interest in skateboarding or any of that or punk or any of that. It was only me and my three or four friends, right? So I approached this world with no idea that um, there was a lack of black people in skateboarding because the only people that I knew that skated were black and they were stars to me. They were doing it years before I even got into it and were really good. And it... In, in, in my conversations with people, it feels like that's not the same case when it comes to surf or to snow. Um, and, I'm, and I'm wondering if that has changed at all now. What do you think snow is like for young black af af athletes now who are going pro and really making it their full career? I think that those kids are just as, as Han Solo, Negro, as, as Russ and Gabby were. Mm. Yeah. I, not even I don't I don't even say I think I know like we yeah. 
we know, we know them, we watch them. Um, they're still, 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 uh, still unicorns. And a lot of it has to do with the bigger conversations of, of access and landscape yeah. access and exposure, um, mm -hmm. and the other sort of socio socioeconomic barriers, um, that, that make, that make a lot of white people within the ski and snowboarding industry think by default that the landscape is theirs. And when they see someone who excels that is of color or is different, it's like, oh, look at you doing our thing. Hmm. Come on in. Let's amplify you because you're different and you're more like us as opposed to this is something that you own. Like, how can we help you own this? Hmm. And that's that's the part that that's that's not there yet and there's just not that generational part of like black families that have been riding and being like i'm gonna raise my black kids at snowboard and it's a, that mountain the idea of us even having like outdoor mountain lifestyles yeah. in any places where you play outside is still like a very much a foreign niche concept concept not just to white people but also to black people yeah mm. it's it's I don't know. It's it's such a it's such an interesting conversation because it's like I've always wondered. I guess the older I get, I'm starting to notice this conversation where it's just I wish that there would be a, a more of an understanding of with the black community and snowboarding. It would it would just seem obvious that it would just be nice to be able to uplift such a, a a small percentage of people who have not been um even though it's like i like i can speak for myself it's like i had great sponsors for sure like they they put me out there for sure and some did it more than most and but it 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 there always could have felt like there could have been more mm. and i wished that and i still wish you know for the 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 young you know, black snowboard community right now that's deep in it. Like, I just, I just hope that it gets to a point to where it shouldn't even be like, how can we make it more? It's just, can you just, just do it? Just, just make it more accessible for, for, for everyone. It, it shouldn't just be like, oh, because they're so different. We have to make it special for them to be brought up. It's like, it should have just been done in, from the get go. It shouldn't have had a separation of like, how can we make it more? I, I and I also feel that with the black snowboarding community, I feel that the best way to get at least people to come up to the mountain to be excited to ride, it just, it needs to be more accessible to get them excited to be like, let's just be outdoors. It doesn't mm. just have to be snowboarding. Let's just get, let's get black people excited to be outside because it's amazing, it's beautiful. And, and it doesn't have to be like, oh, let's make things cheaper. Let's just do it. Let's actually get them excited. I don't know. That's, that's just my thought. But no, it's, 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 it's right on. Oh. It's How right do you on. Think, where do you think that, where, did, where does that come from? Where does the idea that these outdoor sports or just the idea of being outdoors for the simple sake of, of, of enjoying the outdoors, what is that rooted in? Why is it that we have more white Americans in, into that than black Americans? You want to take well, it first, Russ? <laughs> yeah, I got this one. Okay. So, Tony, what happens when you go outside? And if you're in Huntington Beach, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, it's okay. safer inside, bro. Yeah. For yeah. us. That's it. And to go outside and... I, I I was lucky enough. I went to Vail this winter, and I was lucky enough not to have have to buy a ticket. So I, I I it was two hundred and fifty dollars a day. That's just for a ticket. That's mm -hmm. not to to eat. That's not lodging. Mm. That's not if you got to rent. That's none of that. So it's really expensive, and I don't know, man. I it's it. I don't see anybody wanting to spend a whole bunch of money and mm -hmm. and be put under a microscope. That's mm -hmm. like asking a brother to pay to go to jail almost. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that microscope yeah. that microscope is, you know, being stared at in the lines, you know, mm -hmm. going into a store 
to into a shop to buy stuff and people maybe being like wondering what you're doing there and like all those microaggressions that it's like you're like okay i'm gonna go try this thing for the first time but you deal with this kind of energy you know how we are like well that's yeah. a wrap on that, fuck and, if that. You, it, and if you get like a hard fuck that and, yeah. then, and then if you go back though to the deeper question of like the space of outside this is where it gets dirty yeah the outdoors became one of the last vestiges of like safety and privilege in segregation that white people were very very keen to say like these are our spaces mm. and if you were a black person that decided to go in the mountains and go hiking etc you could fully expect to get all of the harassment and be intimidated never to come back if you think about you know the oceans you, you think of, of of manhattan manhattan beach Manhattan Beach, the lower half of, Man of Manhattan Beach was a place called Bruce's Beach. The Bruce family were black people that owned this, that had, that had set up this, this homestead area and that, that was, was town. And it was, it was a beach that was like black families and owned by black people. And the second that shit became valuable, they were like, gone. Mm. Y'all are out, Manhattan yeah. Beach. Sounds and like Black Wall Street. Like Black mm -hmm. Wall Street, um, there's 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 so many stories that you hear across America of 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 black ownership in coastal communities in the Gulf and in the South and in the Northeast. And once those communities became of actual real real estate value, people coming through and being like, either get out or here's pennies on the dollar, get out. But mm -hmm. either way, get out and be gone, and we're going to build resorts, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So a lot of times, white people have this this idea. I had a, 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 I had a, a surfer, a person who I've known for a long time to me, look me square in the eye the other day and be like, you know, I don't think it's surfing's responsibility to help populate um, the, the, the culture because surfing isn't really a part of black culture. The ocean isn't black culture. Like you're, an, anom you're an anomaly. You're an anomaly. And he said it to me like, like he was trying to reveal something to me. Wow. Oh, he did reveal something to you. Yeah. He, yeah. That part. Yeah, he did. That part. That's 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 why that's the one thing I love about Donald Trump is all their asses in the air now, bro. Yeah, <laughs> sure. one. Yeah, they're they're they're, they're out know. there and they're shining, and 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 you can't take so, that back. Yeah, if you've had if you've had the benefit, if you're a beneficiary of a shitty education system, and then some some generational shit that give you that little light prop up to be like, look. You know they're not bad people, but don't bring one home. Mm. You know, yeah. like don't bring one home to play, and surely don't date one. But we love them; they're great people. But yeah, you couple all those things together, and you don't have the history of of why these things are a certain way, and why these spaces. There's so many spaces where people wouldn't even re remotely know how to feel a sense of ownership for them. Of course, you'll be able to skip and feel like, look at this stuff that is just ours; it's just for us. Ba, yeah. ba, 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 ba. And then when you see a Russell or you see a Gabby or you see someone like myself show up in the lift line, you someone you will look at us like someone stole your soul <laughs> because it goes against everything that you thought was humanly possible. And we're, we're not even doing this shit yet. We're just standing in line. Yeah. And that's it's how it was for all of us. Than them. It's worse when you're better oh, than them. Oh, so. man. Man, man. There is like yeah. one person. I'm sorry to cut you off, Russell. There is no, one person. Go. When I was younger, and I, it was the only time that I've ever had any sense of like, I don't even know what, but it, it's just a sense of negativity, I guess, and it matters in, in, in snowboarding. But it was this girl who just deliberately thought, she was like, oh, and I did, she didn't say this to my face, she said it to a friend of mine, but her saying that the only reason why I got my sponsorship is because I was black. And I'm 18. Sounds like that affirmative action uh, <laughs> bullshit. They're like it, blaming everything on affirmative action for why you're even there in the first place. It it ripped me apart. It was the first time I've ever had a hater and known about anything about hating. I didn't know how to, when my the, my friend at the time, when she told me, I was just like, what? Because this is someone who I would ride with every day. Mm. First chair, last call, every day. And it was because she had been in this town for so long, but then I pop up 
and then I get this happening, but it's not from any sense of me being like, I'm going to take this area and be the best. No, I just was snowboarding. And this was right after I got my sponsorship my, with Nikita. And, and then I, I had that amazing uh, first time with them uh, when uh, uh, they invited me to do the photo shoot in San Francisco. And that was my first shoot with them of many. And then I'll never forget Laura Haydar and Mikey LeBlanc. Like they went and they gave me the best advice, which was just like, Gabby, haters are going to hate. Mm. You are here because you deserve it. Do not think that at all. And it, and I was crying too. Cause I was just like, I don't know what, I didn't do anything to this girl. Like I just, I'm just writing and I don't, and I, I, I deliver cause I can be sensitive. Right. And I was still figuring myself out, but to have that level of someone who is not on your side, but yet they were acting that they were, that was a big lesson. Mm. And I learned it. And then it, and I'm actually grateful for it because it's, it's done wonders for me and, and my careers that has been progressed. And, 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 uh, but yeah, I always, I always thank, uh, you know, Laura and Mikey for that. Cause that I, it still to this day meant a lot to me. It's good to have friends who are going to come clean about what's being said about you. You know what I mean? A lot of people don't have that, especially when they're friends who they know because of their business, because of their proximity to them, you know? Mm-hmm. Russell, did, did you ever have moments like that too? Oh, yeah. Uh, I found like a couple years ago when we had started ride snowboards, uh, we took like me and a couple other people from Burton and a couple kids from this company called Joyride. And <laughs> we got a, and this was a fax, like, you know, like a fax to meal, like, so I faxed it. <laughs> Somebody faxed it. Now this is how smart these fucking racists were. Bro. Oh. They faxed it from their office. Mm. Mm. So the office number was right there. You know who you are, and I know who you are. And something about Russell Winfield, nigger this, and you guys all no. suck. And oh yeah, oh, oh yeah. And then there's been times in Montana, bro. I'm not scared. Let's go. Like I'm not a fighter, but come on, man. You know, I'm I'm I go by the way of, of Martin Luther King Jr. I think love is the answer. But yeah. you know, if 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 that if that isn't gonna work, then you know we can talk about some other stuff. I'd rather not. Mm. Yeah. Was there yeah. ever an influence of Black American culture in snow? Come on, like bro. Fashion, music, <laughs> any of that. I mean, yes. I, mean, I feel like it's a no <laughs> Hey, Tony. Hey, I feel Tony. Like it's a no brainer, but I just want to ask hey, you. Hey, Tony. Uh, <laughs> let me tell you something. There isn't an atom of America that isn't directly influenced by urban African American culture. Mm -hmm. Listen, yeah. Tony. All of it. There would be no snowboarding from the years. 2001 to, I won't even, that's, that's, that's being too generous. No, 1909, 90, because me, but, our, my generation, all the way through. True, but I'm talking about when it ramped up and became a thing that all the brands decided, decided to manufacture against. Like everyone's line, all the clothing, et cetera, just being designed based out of hip hop. Baggy. Baggy, like, baggy. like all the companies, even the mm -hmm. big ski companies being like, okay, well, clearly we have to go this Dude, way. These companies are still doing it. <laughs> Shit, that's how far back they are. Like it was, it was, it was like kind of 50-50 punk rock hip hop for a mm -hmm. while. And then it was just hip hop. And we could all sit here and name 20 pro snowboarders who yeah. made their entire <laughs> existence off of like <laughs> chains <laughs> and, and, and like just Two a rags. full... Do rag, yes. full do rag, no and shit. full like full hip hop persona, like ads that 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 made themselves look like the hot boys, like the whole <laughs> shit. Well, no, I'm not, and there's no exaggerations there. Like no, yeah. gold, like well, fronts, the whole shit. Like it yeah. was strictly hip hop for mm -hmm. twelve years. What was it like when y'all first saw those ads? I chuck. I mean, me, go I, ahead, Russ. For me. That in my generation, that's what we did. That and then 
That's who you were. That's who I yeah. was, you know, and 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 the skate because I was in San Diego, we were real close with all the skate kids. So it was like one. We were just all one big group of friends. We all dressed the same, skated. We go snowboarding, and then all of a sudden, certain certain people in the industry decided that what we were doing wasn't cool anymore. But listen to this one. This mm. is the coldest part about that. They grabbed another group of younger kids and plugged them into exactly what we were doing and notched it up. And now it's cool again. And I'm, and notched it up in Utah. <laughs> you know, it's so funny because there's now, so Now, these kids are cool, <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, let's if we're talking about the truth, that's it. I'm I'm not, not, and I'm not, and I'm not dissing those kids, but, like, Suddenly, like all the cool shit as far as hip hop culture and snowboarding was concerned, was coming out of Utah. It is interesting that it was coming out of Utah. And also, you remember Dreamcatcher like style, like with the feathers and stuff? And that was mm -hmm. mixed with the hip hop as well. I, I remember that as well. There was kind of hybrids, and it all did kind of root for because I, I lived out in Utah for a while. And I that's actually a good. That's that's a good point, Salema. I I didn't. <laughs> it is. It was. It kind of was really there. I'm not gonna lie. I wore. I had the Dreamcatchers. I did. Oh, I was no. more. And it was. Well, <laughs> come on. You were. It, you were the alter. You were the kind of. You were the dope. Like <laughs> alternative. <laughs> she was Very, the Erica Badu. Yeah. <laughs> Gabby was. <laughs> <laughs> the head wrap snowboarder. Uh, yeah. <laughs> she was the alternative Negro. Knock chopper. Oh, yeah. Erica. <laughs> Erica, what's happening? Thank you. Where I'm Andre so, at? I'm honored to even have that uh, inflicted upon me. Thank you, guys. Was there a backlash to all this? Like, from other parts of Snow who were like, yo, keep that hip-hop shit out of here? No. Everybody. No. Here's the thing, Tony. Skiers hated snowboarding. See, the ski snowboard thing is kind of... It, uh, uh, I, uh, all right, here we go. <laughs> like the black and white thing. You know what I'm saying? Okay. We're like, they fucking hated it. And next thing you know, their skis are starting to look like snowboards. They're twin tip. Next thing you know, yeah. they got big clothes on. Next mm. thing you know, they're grabbing their ski boots. So. And listening to hip hop. And listening to hip hop and job ja bless and all this other horse shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Come on with that, bro. Oh, my God. <laughs> so this is still going on today, basically, right? Today, this... I just got back from the mountain, bro, and skier's pants are big as hell. <laughs> wow. Baggy pants ain't even the thing in hip-hop no more. <laughs> no. No, they, yeah, they, yeah, see, that... that's the thing. That's the thing. That's what I'm trying to tell you is people just, they, they're going to wear, they're going to, bro, they're not even riding on, they're riding on the brake. Oh, wow, on the discs, bro. It's not even like rims anymore. It's just straight discs. They're driving wow. down the street. They're going to wear it out. <laughs> wow. Um, but snowboarding, you know, has always been like, you know, you had your, 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 your like your dirty punk rock set and you had yeah. your hip hop set and you had like your super, super emo, like tight, young, everything set. It's always been that. But I think Skittles. the hip hop. You know, the, like the, the Skittles, Skittles, yeah, Skittles, Skittles people, Rainbow people. Yeah, colors. Rainbow. Set. I was, I was one. Of, well, I was one of the Skittles kind of people. Because like kind of like raver hippie vibe. No, 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 not a raver. I just liked wearing a lot of colors and like. Okay. The thrifty, <laughs> it's like the, it's like the thrifty. It was the thrifty people. So we would Word. wear like a lot of the uh, like thrift jackets, and we would like. Well, I would paint on it and like make it more customized towards myself. But Badu, yes. yeah, but <laughs> Eric, Badu. the Baduism is creeping back in. Dude, give me the Baduism. I Badu. love it. I'll take it. <laughs> That's just so crazy. Do y'all have any advice for the Black Pro snowboarders today? What can they learn from all these experiences that y'all have been through? Stand your ground, know your worth, and don't believe the lies and the hype. That's it. Solid. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I would say the same thing. Like, you know, really be aware. 
listen mm-hmm. extra intently, pay attention. And if you feel, get that, that, you know, that, that pit feeling in your stomach, that shit is different for you than it is for, for, for other people, even if it's little things, you know, if it's adding up over and over again, and that, that little spider sense is starting to tingle, um, then it's probably true. And more importantly, that I think we've all learned is bind up with each other. Mm. Like, yes. Link up with each other, no matter where you're from, etc. These kids have social media now. Link up with each other, compare stories, like have each other's backs because it is different. And I would also tell them, like, take advantage of the, of, of the us mm. and reach out, yeah. reach out to us. Like we, we, we are all, we're, we're, we're getting connected more and more. Like I didn't even, I didn't meet Gabby until after she did Stranger Things. Yeah. <laughs> like I knew who she was. Um, but then when she got, when it blew up in Stranger Things, I was like, this is amazing. And then, <laughs> and then the, 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 the crazy thing is like, that's when the snowboard media finally started to give Dab- Gabby her due. Yeah. Really? It, it was not because now they wanted to be part of it. Exactly. And that was that that still I still am processing that. So so because Gabby, you're you're getting more press now that you're an actor from these snow media out, out outlets than you did when you were a professional snowboarder? Hundred percent, yeah. And that's the thing that um it was shit, I'm like almost getting emotional. It is sorry. Um, hey, don't apologize. We, we are yeah, all here. We can all cry together if we need to. Yeah, man. We we no, can keep it honest tonight. Yeah, no, it's just it's it's it just meant a lot that Salama said that because it's true. Um, no, it's just you know, and this is real facts. You know, I've been in countless magazines, right? Countless as a lifestyle model, wearing clothes. I'm a snowboarder. I I can count on my fingers how many times I had an interview. Uh, I've never had a cover. I've never had a chance or a conversation to have a, an actual action shot of myself in a magazine. Um, in the matters of, I mean, I, I like in the matters of how anyone else would have it, you know, like where it would be like, you know, Gabby made it like, you know, writing and da da da, doing this, like, or just even from the company to be like, boom, Gabby action shot, you know, sponsor right there. I've never had that. And I would, and it would question in my brain where I would think like not, I would never bring it up. Cause I'm not that type of person. I would never be like, Hey, can I get that? No. Cause I'm like, if you're not going to, I'm just gonna keep doing me and, and yeah, and that's what I had been doing, right? So as I keep doing me, and then like I, I took a step back from snowboarding and wanted to focus with my acting career and then got blessed with some amazing shows and, and, and film and one of them happened to be Stranger Things and I'm still just just uh, so stoked to be part of such an amazing um, uh, television series. But the moment, <laughs> The moment it dropped, and I couldn't tell no one for months to almost a year, the moment it dropped, the entire snowboard community was like, Gabby, 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 can we get an interview? Can we get an interview? Can we do it? Gabby, 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 Gabby. The headline, Stranger Things, like, you know, tur- you know it's pro snowboarder turn actress, da, 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 like all this stuff. And it, and it, and, and, and one of the companies, the magazines that I have been wanting to have just a spread with a photographer to be like, hey, Gabby, we want to do a, a shoot with you. We want to have it just be a photo of you, action shots, this, that. Let's go on a photo trip. Never had that. But this company asked me, and then I finally had an interview with an action shot and then talking about my acting. Mm. But it took until after my entire career as a snowboarder professionally. And that... You know, it was bittersweet because, of course, I was happy and I was stoked. But I was just like, man, you see now I'm the same person. I just you just hadn't seen what I what else I could do. And now you see it. And so it's just it's very interesting. 
It, just it always very- hurts when you feel like you're just a fucking prop. Right. And it's, I mean, I, and I'm not talking down to anybody. I'm not making anyone, you know, I, I'm, I'm thankful for my, 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 my journey and, and my career and the lessons that I have learned. But definitely what I would say, going back to your question of what to, to tell the, the, the black community, you know, young snow, pro snowboarders, know your worth, trust your gut, and make sure definitely kind of what the guys are saying just make sure to just keep keep tabs and like when you start to feel that tingle and you feel like you're not getting what you deserve and the respect you deserve don't feel afraid to either back away or speak your mind or do it yourself Mm. just make sure that you're doing the trust of what you want to do there is no right or wrong in the sense of you if you're doing what's what's inside and and i wish that a lot of times that i spoke up in my career and I didn't. And that's, you know, that's just cause I was, you know, I was just happy to be there. I was just, you know, which most people would be, but anyways. I think we all, I think we all at some point felt like, don't open your mouth too much. Yeah. Don't, you don't want to lose this and yeah. you're the only, so like, just suck it up because look at how good you've got it. Mm. Exactly. Mm. I think the kids these days are lucky um because they can post their own footage exactly they you know it's it's an unfortunately fortunate thing that your worth is now uh you you can count it by your followers you know and that's how they're paying these kids these days Hmm. so if you got all these followers and you're posting heat clips every day you should be on you, 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 you can fall, force the conversation, but even then, you got to like, they, they got to watch their own backs. Mm. And, oh, and, and, and that's how you do it. You, you, yeah. you, Cause I mean, there's a, you know, back when I was doing it, the clips just would disappear or the camera would get pointed and not trigger wouldn't get pulled. Or, uh, really? What? You would get the I mean, shot and it wouldn't be filmed? Like you would be, you would be r- running that trick all day. You would land it, and then it wouldn't be. Would show up. <gasps> oh my god! I would be furious. numerous times. That's you know. After so much of that, I was just kind of like, so I'm not getting paid. The shots aren't showing up. I'm just gonna milk it. I'll be, uh, you know. That's just the truth. That's my truth. I, you know, I came from a sports background. I know mm-hmm. what athletes get paid. You're asking me to go, to go possibly become quadriplegic like the other black dude, Trevor, that I watched become quadriplegic for, you know, pennies. Yeah, I'm cool, bro. You can mm. pay me the pennies. I'm just going to kick back here and, and kind of do my thing. Because if, if, you know, if you don't see my worth, I'm not going to kill myself. If I, if I don't mean, you know, that much to you, then yeah. I, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm good. Man, I've no never told knows. anybody Everything. that. So now it's out there in the ether. Wow. Oh, well. Russell, thanks for sharing, man. Like that. Yeah, man. Thanks a lot to all of y'all. Seriously. And you, yeah. Sal, you were there at that contest when Trevor, Black Trevor, yes. became quadriplegia. I was. Oh, that fucked the rest of my sh- that, that fucked me up for good. I couldn't yep. hit a jump. I couldn't. I just couldn't do it. Everybody's like, what's wrong? I'm like, bro, the only other Black person in snowboarding just became quadriplegic in front of my face like uh, that's heavy yeah traumatic shit for sure yeah i tried i tried to snowboard the rest of that year i i just my brain i couldn't i couldn't i couldn't like i was just having visions of oh wait that was heavy i couldn't get over that one damn. for years damn if you're putting yourself out there in the same way that everyone else is, that does, it's like, it makes it even more so where it's like, why are you putting yourself out there if you're not going to be treated in the same sense as the other yeah. parts that you're doing the same tricks? Like you guys are, we're all. all yeah. Alpha Numeric treated me wonderfully, you know, mm. um, and Holden has treated me wonderfully. Mm-hmm. I will say that. <clears throat> Totally. Even Volcom treats me good. Whenever I, you know, watch some trunks, 
but fire them up. But... <laughs> yeah, the PB and J's, the peanut butter yeah. rail jams. Oh man, I went like all the time. I had the I had the best time at the PB and J's. I missed. Shout out to Volcom. Shout yes, out Volcom PB and J's. <laughs> Kids, go go do them when the mountains are open. You should ride them. They're very fun. Yeah. Well, man, I I hope anybody listening out there takes y'all seriously, and if they're a pro. They should approach y'all for some game, for some wisdom, conversation. I think it's really important. Of course. And even if you're not a pro and you mm-hmm. like just yeah. want to like, you want to know, learn how to navigate the lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Hit us up. You know what? It, you know what the DM's at. You know where we're at. Like, we're 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 here for the next generation for sure. A hundred percent. I wish that I was able to like direct link talk to someone straight up. Like, I agree, Russell. Like. This generation has it so easy of like connection and connect, like to be able to communicate about these kinds of things. And, and we all have to kind of come together more and, and to, to bring the black snowboarding community together as much as possible is so important. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's see it happen, man. Gabby, yeah. Russell, Salema, thank you so much for being on this episode today. Hey, if, hey Tony, if, you crushed this any, shit, bro. Yeah. yeah man, thank hey, you. I just, <laughs> hey, hey, I just wanted to say, that there's a connection that hasn't been made between Sal's dad and Gabby's dad. Oh, we got, yeah. We got, we got musical geniuses. <laughs> unified. Both that, of them. That yeah. is what's up. <laughs> it's know? true, man. Hugh Master Both Kayla. of your fathers are musical geniuses. I've done and my we, research. Thanks, Russell. Yeah. And we, we figured out that they probably they probably at least high-fived in the club They once. did. No, I talked to when when I when we met, Salema, we had... That's right. We we ate uh we ate lunch or dinner and then dinner. I t- yeah I told my dad I was like do you know I asked did you know you guys kill he's like yeah for sure it's like dad I just had like dinner with his son and like we're like friends now and I've like looked up to snowboarding and all this <laughs> and it was crazy because he was like really because he had no he had no idea that like. Hugh had a son who was in snowboarding as well. It was just, it was a really, the generations coming together in such a crazy, beautiful Probably way. blew his mind. What is wrong with our children? Oh, that turn around there. Oh, shit. That was great. Oh, uh, that's good, Tony. No, well, thanks yeah. a lot, y'all, man. Y'all have a great night. Appreciate right, it. Man. Thank you. All Thank right. you so much. Love you guys. Bye, Salama. Love Bye, you Russell. too, Gab. Bye. Bye. Be continued. Peace. Yes, sir. Go. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to the True Conversation Podcast, presented by Volcom. Volcom would like to offer you a 15% discount at Volcom.com. Just enter code PODCAST at checkout, and a discount will be applied. Peace.